Well, if you know anything about the development of Magnum handgun cartridges, you probably have a clue about who we're going to be talking about today. The hat ought to give you another hint. Today, we're going to be talking about Mr. Elmer Keith, really the father of the Magnum handgun cartridges of today. Um, we're going to get set up here in a few minutes, and we're going to shoot a few 357 Magnum and some 44 Magnum. And as an added bonus, we're going to shoot some out of Elmer Keith's own guns. So stick around, we'll get set up and come right back and we're going to have a whole lot of fun. Today we've got a great lineup of revolvers to talk about. But before we get to the revolvers, let's talk about a man who had so much to do with the development of these revolvers and particularly the cartridges that went into them. A man by the name of Elmer Keith. Now some of you, many of you probably already know who Elmer Keith is. And I could go on and on and on because I'm a huge fan of Elmer Keith. But uh, if you really want to know more about Mr. Keith, best thing you can do, get a copy of Hell I Was There, his autobiography. That's a great read. It's a little slow getting into it first, but uh, talking about his childhood back in Missouri. But when it gets into uh, his young adulthood and, and throughout his life, it's just an amazing story of a man that... Um, started out in Missouri, grew up mostly in Montana, and spent most of his adult life in Idaho and here in Eastern Oregon. Um, Cowboy, rode saddle bronx, broke bronx, um, ranched, but mostly he was a, a guide and a firearms enthusiast, and he just took it, took without any kind of engineering training in firearms, trained himself and developed so much and then ended up being a prolific writer wrote for a lot of the magazines i know when i was a young man i couldn't wait for guns and ammo to come out to see the the latest article written by elmer keith um unfortunately i never got the opportunity to, to meet the man he, he passed away when i was about 20 years old but his fingerprints are on revolvers like nobody else I, the, the, the man was simply amazing at, at the things he developed and what he's most well known for in the revolver world and of course he did a lot of work in rifles and shotguns I mean the man even helped develop, develop the Winchester Model 70 bolt action rifle you know arguably the best bolt action mass produced ever um, but but really he's well well known for developing magnum handgun cartridges you know, he was, he was instrumental in the development of the 357 Magnum. And then really it was his work on, on the 44 Special, hot rod in the 44 Special, even to the point that he, he uh, destroyed a few guns in the process um, that led to the 44 Magnum. And, and he pushed and pushed and pushed until uh, Remington finally came out with that cartridge. Smith & Wesson got, came out with it in a revolver and the rest is history. Several others have, of course, followed suit. For a long time, course that was the most powerful handgun cartridge ever produced um, of course it's been passed up there's kind of some re ridiculously large handgun calibers in revolvers now but um, that 44 magnum you know where would we be without it we wouldn't even have dirty hairy movies or if we did they'd be with a, what a 38 special something something of that nature um, so Elmer Keith is really really one of my heroes um, just just a, an incredible man for what he accomplished. What a life well lived. And if, if you study up on, on Mr. Keith, um, I think you'll be as impressed as I am with the guy. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get these revolvers kind of loaded up. And we're going to talk about each one of them. And then we're going to shoot them a little bit and uh, talk about the, the cartridges that Mr. Keith developed. And the fact is that three of these guns that are sitting on this table belonged to Mr. Keith in his lifetime. So we're going to talk about those guns and, and put a couple rounds through them. And, and uh, really, it's almost a religious experience when you handle a gun that, that you know was belonged to Mr. Keith. So stick around for that. We're just about to get started doing some shooting. Okay, we're going to start off talking about these two Ruger Red Hawks here in the middle. Both of these Red Hawks are serial number 15. Now, the significance of that is, is that was Elmer Keith's own personal serial number from Ruger. They would send him um, each new model in his own personal serial number, number 15, for him to evaluate. Um, so these were purchased from, from Mr. Keith's estate after he passed away. This uh, Red Hawk, of course, he's, I'm sure he was the one that fired it. it. It's obviously in fired condition, although 
um, and still in really nice shape. We know from Mr. Keith's writing that he really wasn't a big fan of the, um, the stainless steel finish. Um, it's really good in bad weather conditions and whatnot, but uh, he didn't like the way they shined being a hunter and a, and a guide like he was. But, uh, but he certainly had a few in his collection, of course, since Sturm Ruger was, was sending them to him to evaluate. I'm sure he didn't turn them down. Let's take a few rounds through it and, and see how it goes. That's a nice revolver. This Super Red Hawk, I don't believe has been fired outside of the factory. Um, these came out actually to the public a little after Mr. Keith passed away, so I imagine this one got sent to him to evaluate, and it was late in his life. He had had a stroke towards the end of his life, so uh, I don't think it's ever been fired, and out of respect, uh, I'm not going to be the first to fire that gun. Okay, so the, the 44 Magnum that uh, Mr. Keith developed obviously was used in a whole lot of different guns. So we've got a couple others here out, out of my personal collection that we're going to fire as well. Um, first is this, this Smith & Wesson Model 29. Of course, we all know Model 29s, right, if we've seen Dirty Harry. This one's got a little longer barrel. This is an 8 and 3 eighths. I think the Dirty Harry movies, he used a 6 and a half inch barrel. Um, but just... Just a fabulous revolver, these, these Model 29s. Ooh, right over the top. There we got it. That's a great gun. Now here's one. This is a Ruger single action. Really kind of loosely based on the the single action army Colts. When the when Colt went out of production with the single action armies, um, Elmer Keith really went to work trying to get them to, to reintroduce them. And when they didn't, then he went to his friend Bill Ruger and really worked on him. And Ruger ended up producing this this uh, Black Hawk. This particular one's a Super Black Hawk um, with improvements over the single action army. Thereafter, they became so popular that Colt did actually come back out with the, the second generation single action army and then the third generation after that. This is a gun that I bought brand new when I was 18 years old. When I first turned 18, I bought this gun um, because I just was in love with the 44 after reading so much about them from, from uh, Elmer Keith. All these loads today that we're shooting are, we're using Keith designed semi wad cutter bullets um, that, that I've cast myself here on the Cinnabar and uh, 2400 powder which was Mr. Keith's favorite out of respect for, for him we, we've loaded him up with his own design bullets and his favorite powder I do love that gun. Okay, so now we're up to a couple of really special guns. And uh, I'm gonna get kind of things set back up and get them loaded up, and then we're gonna talk about a couple of single action armies here, uh, original first generation single action armies that are, are really, really important guns in a lot of respects. One of them actually belonged to Mr. Keith and has been worked on by Mr. Keith. So stick around, we'll be right back for that. So as promised, here we are back to talk about these single action army Colts. These are first generation single action army, both in 38 special. This particular revolver belonged to Mr. Elmer Keith himself and has been modified. Mr. Keith believed that the, the single action army was just a wonderful gun, but it's one, one weakness was that it didn't have adjustable sights. So on, on this particular revolver, he, he milled out the rear sight groove and put an adjustable rear sight in 
then dovetailed the barrel and put a number four um, Lyman hunting sight with a little ivory bead on it. This particular revolver, um, while it was a 38 Special, not surprisingly has been opened up where it'll accept 357 Magnum cartridges. The ivory grips on it are a, a later um, addition. These were John Warren. He's a, he's a very well-known um, engraver. And uh, these were put on by a previous owner. They weren't on it when Mr. Keith owned it. Apparently when, when he had it, they had a set of ivory grips on that were cracked and somebody else put these on, but they're beautiful, beautiful grips. And we're gonna do something special today. Uh, this isn't a gun I've ever shot, so we're gonna see where it shoots. Hopefully it's, it's right on the money. Hopefully those sights haven't been touched since Mr. Keith adjusted him himself. I'd like to think that anyway. Shooting a little bit high. Dang. Well, I would have liked to have uh, had that hit a few more targets. I think Mr. Keith probably had it sighted in for a whole lot longer ranges than we're shooting today. So this this revolver is an absolute beauty. This is another 38 special, first generation. Um, has some custom ivory grips on it. But the significance here is that Mr. Keith, after he design, designed these um, adjustable sights for his own guns, did a bunch of work for the King Sight Company, and they did real similar work. So we've got a real similar rear sight, adjustable rear sight on this one, and then a King Sight Company front sight on it. So um, this was really something I'm sure that, that Mr. Keith helped King Sight Company come up with, and we can kind of see this being a prototype and this being the finished product that the King Sight Company um, produced. So let's take a few rounds through it. This is absolutely gorgeous, beautiful first generation single action army. And I have to admit, these, gun these two single action armies are part of my wife's collection. King sights shoot pretty well. Okay, well there you have it. Some of Mr. Keith's guns in the calibers that he either helped design or basically absolutely designed the 44 Magnum. Um, what, what a wonderful day to be out here shooting Keith designed cartridges through Mr. Keith's own personal guns. Okay, so I just couldn't let that go shooting so poorly with Mr. Keith's 357. So I've got it loaded back up and we'll see if we can't do a little better this time. Appeared to me it was shooting a little high, which would make sense because uh, Elmer Keith really liked to, to shoot long ranges with these revolvers. So he's probably got it sighted in for a whole lot longer than the 25 yards or so that we're shooting at today. So let's see if we can't uh, make some little adjustments and shoot a little better. <laughs> I like it. All right, five for five. That's a whole lot better. That's been a wonderful day. It doesn't get much better than shooting 357 Magnum, the designed by Elmer Keith, in a revolver that belonged to Elmer Keith and was modified by Elmer Keith. What a great day it's been. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.